Are you ready? We receive answers from God. Listen, first by asking in prayer. I'm teaching you the laws of receiving. We receive answers from God first in prayer. You cannot receive from God outside of prayer. We receive from God by asking in prayer. We receive from God first by asking in prayer. Psalms 34 and verse 17. We receive from God by asking and that in prayer. Psalm 34, 17. We receive from God by asking in prayer. Let's work together media. Can we get Psalm 34 and verse 17? The righteous cry and the Lord hear it and deliver it them out of how many? Say all. The righteous cry and the Lord hear it. The righteous cry the psalmist said, if I cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear me when I pray. But here it is, he says, the righteous cry and the Lord hear it and deliver them out of all their troubles. We receive answers from God by asking in prayer. Mark, Matthew 7 and verse 8. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 8. Matthew 7 and verse 8. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. There is a guarantee that provided you ask, you will receive. He never said everyone in need will receive. You have to verbalize your need, vocalize your need by asking in prayer. Everyone that asketh, receiveth. Can I give you two more scriptures? First John 5, 14 and 15. A beautiful worship team sang it. First John 5. 14 and 15 and this is the confidence that we have in him that if 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 we ask anything if we ask healing according to his will if we ask for lifting according to his will if we ask for open doors restoration according to his will my bible your bible says he heareth us next verse he says, and if we know that he heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. John chapter 16 and verse 24. He says, he that told you have asked nothing in my name. He says, ask and ye shall receive. Are you seeing it now? Now, most believers have needs, but they do not know that asking is the seed for receiving ye have not because he asked not he says he that told you have asked for nothing ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full is someone ready to ask we receive answers from God first by asking first by asking first by asking Mark 11 24 what things soever ye desire we read it earlier on when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and ye shall have them whatsoever things ye desire when you pray asking in prayer someone say i will ask go ahead say i will ask when it's time to pray don't keep quiet regardless the kind of anointing present don't be silent regardless the ministry of angels don't be silent and don't ask for some and leave some the bible says what thing soever if it's a job ask it give me this day my daily bread your daily bread is not food it's everything that makes for your sufficiency and efficiency and it says god gives it daily not monthly daily i receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. I receive, I receive, I manifest.
tell you if you are not willing to ask if you are ashamed of asking even in the world of men you will never receive am I right on that for everyone that asketh receive it tonight is a night to ask tonight is a night to ask don't just say father visit me generally that is careless asking you ask with intelligence are we together? Let this plague, oh God, mention it. Plague of crying. I see things just when I want to receive them, they evaporate. Let it end. Everyone that asks it. Why is it that people vow that I will, I will visit you? Call me on Thursday. You call by Thursday morning. They say, I can't remember calling you. If you call me again, I'll, you'll go to jail. And you're saying, sir, but on Monday we spoke. I can't remember you. Your space has been taken by another. Tonight is the time to ask. Lord, what is this, this disfavor hanging around my life? You are father. When you wanted a cult that no man had ridden on. Listen, let me tell you the truth. Tonight's miracle service, if you open up your heart, you will be surprised what God will do. someone who is tired of where they are listen someone who tonight is not the night to allow things continue oh so this is the key i have been desiring but not been asking i've been desiring but not been asking i've been wishing wishing is not asking no wishing is not asking having a strong desire is important but it is not asking you are only entitled to receive when you ask lord show me favor jabez said oh that thou wouldest bless me jabez would have said look at what my mother did for me that is not asking that is complaining and that's how many of you have approached god god look at what is happening in nigeria i understand i sympathize but that is not asking father you said the increase of the field is for all and that even the king is served in the name of jesus i place a demand on my portion my portion in nigeria my portion in europe my portion in america you are father the earth is the lord that my portion be delivered to me that my portion be delivered to me you are a god of portions there is a rehoboth attached a rehoboth for me my portion be delivered to me we receive from god first by asking first by asking let me give you a minute to ask for something before we continue i shouldn't tell you what to ask you know where the pain is ask you know where the disappointment is ask you know where the discouragement is ask you know where the confusion is ask you know where the defeat is ask you know where the limitations are ask unto thee that hearest prayer shall all flesh come someone ask ask in faith you are asking Abba, you are asking Pata, the giver of all good things. We receive answers from God by asking in prayer, by asking in prayer, by placing a demand, specific demands in prayer. There are rules to answers. Hallelujah. Please be seated with your faith rising be seated with anger holy anger in your spirit be seated as one who is prepared to receive open door means access to the next level all the rooms in a house are separated by doors just because you are in a house does not mean you will enjoy every provision in that house you can be in the living room 
but the door that leads to the kitchen is closed and if it does not open when you are hungry you will be in the house and be dying of hunger the door to the restroom can be closed when you are pressed and you need to ease yourself and that door is not open it brings discomfort hallelujah praise the name of the lord i want you to bring all those that the power of god will rest on them now whilst you are seated whilst you are seated whilst you are seated i want to make a declaration this is not just for individuals all these people are representing families i'm seeing in the spirit families tied down by chains doors that have closed over them this is what god is revealing to me i want to bring them out every family here not just you are individuals but you are representing families no one has been able to go forward there is an embargo that has sat upon families in the name of jesus christ i call upon el shaddai i call upon the warrior whilst you are seated anyone here under territorial closed doors that have tied you down tied your family down right now by the fire of the holy ghost let it descend upon that family now let it descend upon that family now descend upon that family now descend upon that family now bring them out descend upon that family now in the name of jesus descend upon that family now my god in the name of jesus he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder tied by witchcraft tied by ancestry tied by bloodline in the name that is above all names i say it again be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now you and your family be delivered now open up the gate open up the doors will you open up the gates open up the doors open up the gates open up the doors me the lord is ministering to me that there are a number of you here an anointing is coming on you is a barrier breaking anointing something that has never been done in your family you have seen it in your visions you are the one ordained to do it i don't know how many of those people are there but let that anointing rest on you now bring them out the anointing of a savior the anointing of a breaker the anointing of a warrior in the name of jesus dimensions in the spirit that have never been crossed in your family may you cross it now levels of wealth that have never been attained by your family step into it now step into it now step into it now hallelujah listen when angel gabriel came to zechariah and said you will have a son zechariah wanted to prophesy something else and he shut his lips and then when they were about to call him john they said no you can't call him john nobody from this lineage has ever carried that name john nobody from this lineage has ever been called prosperous nobody from this lineage has ever been called anointed nobody from this lineage has ever been called a genuine christian nobody from this lineage has ever crossed primary school secondary school nobody from this lineage has even gone outside nigeria i stand by the anointing by the god who sent me anyone here who has been tied down pegged down that you and your family cannot go forward I prophesy to you go forward now 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 Alenda kaparosa takepa lako sabash 
Go forward. Go forward in ministry. Go forward in ministry. Anointed but under closed heavens. Go forward. I release you. Go forward. Go forward in career. 10 years without promotion. 15 years without promotion. Go forward now. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I'm hearing in my spirit jubilee. Let me tell you what jubilee is. Jubilee is an exodus. After many years of captivity. Please listen. Listen. We're praying. We're praying. There is the spirit of Laban is the spirit that never allows men to go it will encourage you with something to keep you small but it will never allow you go and have your own space it's a spirit that fights increase when Laban saw Rachel he liked her and he wanted to marry her but Jacob knew that if he marries her he will go away and he trapped her down he trapped him down and the man kept serving when it was time to carry his wife they exchanged the wife for Leah and the man stayed again many years. The spirit of Laban. You won't suffer, but you won't rise. That is the spirit of Laban. You won't beg, but you can't give because you are barely enough. I pray for you. Any house you have found yourself, physically and in the spirit, that is tying you down, not allowing you to rise to live destiny. Tonight, I declare Jubilee. I declare jubilee. I declare jubilee. I declare jubilee. Be released to go forward. Be released to make progress. Be released to make progress. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh. Holy Ghost power oh, oh. Oh, oh. There are two dimensions number one follow them who have who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Why do we follow them? Because of the advantage of experience. There is a cyclical movement to life. This is where age, eldership and experience plays. Are we together? Even if you are Samuel who will be a great prophet, you will need Eli to help you interpret the voice of God because he has had it before. And God will usually speak to you using the voice of Eli. However, there are certain virgin moves of God that only happens when you look unto Jesus. That is another way to follow. There is follow them, but there is looking unto Jesus. Because there are times that he moves, both the old and the young stand at a loss because it is a path that has never been followed. Listen, if you are a prophetic person, discern what I am telling you. There are many, many people who respectfully speaking, loyalty to how God moved yesterday is stopping them from aligning with how He is moving now. Hallelujah. Yes. It is true that He once spat on the ground and made spittle out of it, but that is not the only way. No. Many miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which were not recorded here. Yours is for your hearts to be open. That's why I love the, 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 the rendition here. They are songs of worship. They said I will follow the lamb. But they also said I will follow the lion. Do you know it's the same person? So why are you mentioning two dimensions to the same person? Because the way the lion leads you is not the way the lamb will lead you. Although it is still the same person. You don't have to stretch your ears to hear the lion. The roar is loud enough. But you will need dedication and concentration to hear the lamb speak. I am meek and I am lowly. There was a wind and the voice was not in the wind. There was an earthquake and the voice was not in the earthquake. And then after all of that, there was a still, small voice. Elijah, what are you doing here? 
But when fire was coming from heaven, it was not silent. It came in such a mighty way that it came and consumed everything. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. We need a generation of men and women who understand how to discern, to discern, to discern. The bankruptcy of discernment has gotten many to a point where they are not flexible and they do not understand what God is doing. It is true that you have never seen a child prophesy, but one day your child of four years old can look at you and say, Daddy, don't do business with that man. Go and pray for two hours. And it does not make sense. His age, you are used to matured elderly people with ministerial pedigree speaking to you. But God decides to use an earthen vessel that does not make sense. And yet the most powerful prophetic instruction in your life may come from that child. If you are a king and you are looking for a prophet and you ignore the slave girl, you may never find the prophet. You must know how to hear the king the prophet but you must also know how to hear the slave girl because sometimes it's the advice from the slave girl that connects you to elisha are we together now say discernment one more time say discernment there are times that you are preparing to go and do business or go and do whatever and the spirit of god constrains you and in that constraint watch this in that constraint, something begins to happen to you. What's what happens to you? You begin to have a feeling. Go for a three-day fasting. Listen, can I tell you? Sometimes it, will, it does not make sense to anybody, including you. Just the foolishness of obeying God. You go and lock yourself. First day, nothing happens. You just keep praying. Lord, you ask me to come here. Second day, nothing happens. By the third day, a veil that did not open for your grandfather, a veil that did not open for your father, that vista into the prophetic destiny of the family just opens. And God says, this is the reason why everybody has failed in your family. This is the reason why people did not rise, even though they were missionaries. Correct this. Adjust this. Step into this eternal covenant and this consecration and you will emerge out of nowhere. And men who do not understand Understand this thing we say from whence did you come? We we do not know you in this fashion. Discernment. You have been taught that businessmen don't pray, they just think. But the formula designed for your own advancement, because of the field wherein you have found yourself, you will pray as if you're a prayer warrior and yet you're a businessman. It is the strategy for your victory. Flexibility. Flexibility 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 discernment the bible says and of the sons of issachar men who had an understanding of the times and they knew what israel ought to do as a result the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command i always want to make reference respectfully speaking about 10 maybe 15 years or so ago the lord spoke to me i, I shared this with with every sense of responsibility and he told me that the next decade of the church as a den that it would not just be by sales of tapes and cds i remember and he said to take our audio materials as raw as it is and to put it in the internet through the social media platforms in their infancy not the best of production but he said my angel will take it to the nations and this is how i'll announce you the flexibility to do it for someone god is following an unusual path with you just because you are alone does not mean you are wrong did you hear what i said just because you are alone does not mean you are wrong just because you are alone does not mean you are wrong this is a word for someone just because you are alone alone in prayer alone in giving 
alone in the sacrifice. Everybody has gotten a job except you. Just because you are alone. They don't know what you are confronting. There are age long altars that have vowed that nobody rises. And God is submitting you. Do you know there are many things that God calls us to do. That in doing them the benefit is beyond ourselves. He's, you are looking through the loins of prophecy. And you are seeing your children and your children's children. And he's saying for their sake go on the fast. For their sake, build capacity. Elijah, you are a prophet, but eat. The journey is far. You have no idea where you are going. He ate a little and he slept. He woke him again. He said, eat. It means pray. It means study. It means get knowledge. It means build the relationships now. You don't know how far you are going. You may not have the luxury of these men you are seeing now. Invest in relationships. Invest in prayer. A time will come the demand of the nations upon you. You will not even have time to stretch as much as you used to. You will drink from the residue of your investment. This is the place of encounter. Do to me what you want. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where my life is changed. Listen, I will share with you something to bless your heart. Do you know how I finally settled here in Abuja? For three years, God began to speak to me that the season, a dimension of my ministry and my work was coming to an end. And for three years, I didn't know whether it was Abuja, whether it was just, I just kept praying. That dissatisfaction. I loved Zaria with all my heart. I was used to that. I mean, people were coming literally from all over the world. It was at a point of ministry excellence and results like you have not seen. And yet God was saying, this is just a layer. There is another layer. Remember ye not the former things. You can like yesterday too much. You will lose tomorrow because of yesterday. Listen, I returned back from, I think, South Africa, had a meeting in Lagos. COVID was just about to start. Now, Abuja has always been second home, but not for ministry. I didn't know whether it was Abuja, whether it was, it was just, perhaps, maybe among my people to just go. But where I, it was just in my heart. I knew I was having visions. They were not yet clear. You don't, it does not become clear from the beginning. It is not an unusual experience you are having. That's how we all pass through it. Anybody who understands building prophetic destiny, anything that comes with clarity from beginning, is a sign that you are in error. God will always demand faith. There is a sign to that vision that will be hidden. It's your commitment that will cause him to unravel it. God is a God that hides himself in light. He will give you an experience and hide it back to draw you. Moses, he sees a bush that is burning, but not consumed, and yet it does not have any sound. And then he says, I will turn aside and see this great sight. And when God saw that he now turned aside, he said, Moses, take off your shoes. It's not about the burning bush, there is more, but I needed to use it to get your attention. Hallelujah. Please play the strings for me. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm teaching you by the Spirit of God, I'm giving you a compass to navigate the days that are now before us because there will be a divergence. Respectfully speaking, you will find out that many, many lampstands will suddenly go down and then others from nowhere. Yet there are those that will remain burning because of the intelligence to discern and to navigate prophetic seasons. Just because you were greatly demanded of and for yesterday does not mean the demand will remain tomorrow. The sustainability of impact in the kingdom is predicated upon your ability to discern seasons. He made lights and those lights were for seasons and for years. Discernment. I remember 
I returned from Lagos and then I left for London. We were about the last set of people to leave London. As I came to Abuja, I think preparing to rush back to Zaria for a miracle service or somewhere, that was when they announced the lockdown, the global lockdown. Ladies and gentlemen, that lockdown you see, that was it. Oh. I said, no, there has to be a reason. Lord, what am I going to do with myself now? If I had left, I was considering using another flight, I would have been trapped in London for three months, roaming around the streets of London. But then, God brought me, and as soon as I came, I know that God is a God of purpose. And I just said, okay, my people, God bless you. When COVID is over, we'll have our time. It was that time. Finally, Lord, is it Abuja? Is it, is it just? Is it where? And I was praying, and the spirit of prayer came upon me. And it was at that time I just saw the map of Abuja. I said, that is it. The Lord instructed me to buy the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, and the map of the world. I got these four maps, and I was praying like a madman. Do you have the discernment and the flexibility to receive the prophetic blueprint for the next level? Which venue would be used? That one is another story. Where the people will come from, that is another story. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hmm. I began to pray, laying hands on those maps every day, praying. Lord, when you give the word, great is the company of them that publish it. I may not see the wind, I may not see rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water. Mine is to pray, mine is to prepare. The Bible says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you. Holy Spirit, this is what you are meant for. Now I yield myself to you. Direct the course of my life. When you see any man looking like a sign and a wonder, let me tell you, they have only learned how to move with the wind. The Bible says the wind blows where it listed. You cannot tell where it's going, nor where it's coming. For somebody, God can just call you. You have been fasting for every day, but that one day fast is where the blueprint of your destiny will be revealed. But do you have the flexibility? The flexibility. The flexibility. It was time to turn water to wine. The Bible says the wine finished. And then they came, Mary led them to Jesus. Watch this. And Jesus said, are you sure you really want new wine? Yes, we want new wine. Embarrassment is imminent. He said, all right, be ready to do what you've never done. Get six pots. Never has wine been formed that way. No. Wine is formed through fermentation. Is that true? And now he's using another formula. And then they filled six pots. He said, fetch it. Don't taste it. Don't verify. Just be on your way. The Bible says, as they went, in shame. What if nothing happened? Do you know they would have killed them at that point? In a fifth embarrassment is there, you now come and add to it. But as they went, in the foolishness of obedience, a miracle began to happen. The Bible says, when the ruler tasted it, they said, ah, what is this? People bring their best wine at first. That means there is a kind of wine the church has not tasted. Ah, there is a kind. We thank God for our fathers. We thank God for generals, both in the Bible and in history. But I assure you by the authority of scripture, there is a kind of wine that must be tasted before his majesty returns. And there are men and women, ordinary men, ordinary psalmists, ordinary prophets, ordinary apostles, ordinary businessmen. Listen, we don't know how to make wine, but we know how to carry it. Ah, we can carry it to nations. We are not the ones making the wine, but we can carry the wine. We can carry the wine. We can carry it to nations. We can carry it across the globe. And no power in existence sustains what it takes to stop the transparency of that wine. The wine is not from us. We are not manufacturers of wine. We only take it to the rulers of the earth. This is the place of surrender. 
manufactured by Joshua Selman was not manufactured by Koinonia the songs that you hear men and women like me Dunsin sing it we don't manufacture them we only take them as and serve them to the nation the formula listen the formula when it has to do with working with God creativity is not required it is alignment and obedience it is when we have to do with invading the cosmos that is when we bring creativity when it has to do with God, your creativity is not important. It is your alignment and your obedience. Then when you receive from His presence, you now add creativity to that which you have received. Hallelujah. Behold, I do a new thing. You want to navigate prophetic seasons in your life. You must understand the power of the new. The first key is discernment and flexibility. Let me give you the second very quickly. The second key when you want to experience new things in your life is that you will need strength and courage. Strength and courage. <laughs> Joshua chapter 1 please, 5 to 7. Strength and courage. There is nobody who is able to explore virgin dimensions in the spirit and become men of power and stature when you do not understand strength and courage. Joshua 1, 5 to 7. 1, 5 to 7. 1, 5 to 7. Thank you. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee, speaking to Joshua, all the days of your life. I hope you know he had never assumed leadership in this capacity. The Bible starts by saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Get over it. I love Moses. I use Moses. But that formula is dead. Good things can die. It's not only evil that can die. God is a God of evolution and transition. As far as his work with the saints is concerned, there are many good things he may need to shelve because there are greater things coming. It is not only evil or bad things that are thrown aside. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake you. Verse 6. It says, be strong. He's speaking to a man who is about to assume enormous office. A, 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 an office that would demand, I mean, the continuity, the manifestation of prophecy depend on his leadership and yeah he's speaking to the people no idea of the battles that were before him and joshua was told to be strong and of a good courage for unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance i hope you know the inheritance is talking about hard giants there and yet god did not even he was talking as if the giants were already dead share the inheritance which I swear unto the fathers to give you. Seven. Only be thou strong and, a, and very courageous. Be strong. Be very courageous. Can I tell you? Men who will understand, navigate and excel as far as the prophetic shift that is happening is concerned are people who have strength. Strength and courage 
courage to stand alone courage to be controversial <clears throat> you cannot be agreeable and step into prophecy hallelujah he comes to meet a young lady minding her business preparing for her marriage and he says young lady you have found favor with god blessed are you among all women you would think after that blessing she should be announced she should be he called it favor i've studied mary's life from that journey until jesus have, i still don't know what is favor in that statement i understand giving birth to jesus but the controversies that surrounded mary from that time joseph wanted to quietly leave her she was about to lose her marriage lose her life and yet god calls that favor so pain can be favor there are moments that it does not look like it and yet god calls his favor be careful what you call what what is happening to you ask god for the name to use for it because you can see pain that is a ladder for your ascendance and you call it pain but god calls it favor you would see jesus dying on the cross you call that death but he calls that the path to victory today when we go to heaven we don't just use crowns to know jesus because there are men and elders who have crowns but when everybody lifts his hand the one who has the scar that which was a, an emblem of shame today is the symbol that is that is the signature of his majesty when jesus appeared he he said to thomas's doubting not by saying look at my head he said put your hand so the scars the nails you would have seen him three, four days ago and you would have assumed that such a weak Jesus, the foolish man at the other side of the cross, you heard what the guy was saying too. And the other one rebuked him and said, we are criminals here for a just reason. This man has not done anything. So don't call your lack of food. It's not poverty. It's not always poverty. You may be calling it poverty. God is calling it training training for where he's taking you so that you will learn how to abound you will learn how to do with plenty and with nothing are we together now believers must learn how to interpret the writings of the world from the lens of the spirit otherwise you will lose prophetic seasons because they do not come in an appearance that you are used to you need courage say courage you need strength yes the bible says by the strength of an ox is much good gotten the strength of an ox you see how an ox plows the field for hours yet it is making the ridges the strength of an ox is what you will need in this end time there are times you have to stand alone for many years before others join you there are times you have to see ahead of every other person maybe in your family maybe in your business and literally be there for a long time before people begin to join you one by one do you have the courage to be alone strength and courage psalm 27 1 and 3 1 to 3 psalm 27 we are looking at the second key. I like the psalmist. You know, I've told you this thing. This psalmist man, I really look forward to seeing him in heaven. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The man suffered too much till he became wise. Hallelujah. Do you know that his wisdom came on the strength of his scars? The psalmist. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Verse 2. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Verse 3. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Did the Bible not say, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy of praise? He says, so shall I be saved from my enemies. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you need courage. In this seeker-friendly world, there are many, many times you will have to walk against the odds. People do not have to believe in you to succeed. No. We live in a world where everybody wants to be free of any, you just want to be accepted by everybody regardless. No, sir. The way of the kingdom is a narrow path. 
there are times you will have to take certain steps because of your conviction, because of courage. It may not be the best. But that may be the path a mark for your greatness. Hallelujah. Courage. Strength. Number three. Experiencing new dimensions demand obedience. This is a serious one. Obedience. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. Emmanuel, all the world is calling your name. Emmanuel, when you come again, Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face. Emmanuel, when you come again. Listen, there are some of you right now, you are beginning to enter very deep seasons. You are in a kairos moment in your life. And it's not something that will just be for weeks. The Holy Spirit is going to hold your hand and lead you through dimensions. Sometimes you may not understand. I raise that song because I want to prophesy to you that you be strong in the midst of it. I charge you by the Spirit, be strong. You will pray alone many times. You will fast alone many times. The stage will not be there for men to give you the applause. But you need stamina and discipline. Stamina and discipline to build capacity. Hear me. You are building capacity for the days ahead. You are eating for the journey that is ahead. This is the word of the Lord to you. Build capacity. The Holy Ghost is going to hold your hand. He will draw you through realms and dimensions you have not seen. He said, call on me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. 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 not. Listen, there is a kind of warrior God is building. It's an arsenal that the world has not seen. There are hybrid spiritual combinations, grace upon grace. There are certain graces that were alone, but God is merging them with other graces because there is a kind of warrior He's building. Listen to what I'm telling you. Ah, you, you will look at them and wonder, are you an apostle? Are you an, a prophet? We, we cannot describe what exactly you are. There are hybrid combinations. The hunger of people is driving them to touch graces. They are touching graces. The grace of an intercessor. The grace of a financier. The grace of a prophet. The grace of an apostle. The grace of a watchman. And that hybrid combination is forming a very dangerous believer that God will be using as a battle act in this end time. Listen, you see, before now, before now, there are certain pathways that when men see you following, they can almost predict. But right now, you see worshippers that you do not know. Are you a musician or a prophet or an apostle? Because there are hybrid spiritual combinations. That the hunger of men and the urgency of God's prophetic program is causing men to outsource graces. It's a dangerous spiritual combination. You will see men that are like armies. One man. One man. 
because of the abundance of the graces that they have captured. Hallelujah. So you look at that man. You are seeing a Benny Hinn. You are seeing a Renhard Bunker. You are seeing a Catherine Kuhlman. And you are saying, what kind of believer are you? Who combines you like this? The intelligence of the spirit. Ah. Men who don't have the voice to sing, but they can receive songs like ladders from the spirit and give it to the ministry of chemistry and say, sing us into higher realms. Sing us, let us ascend the ladder that will open to us the vistas of the spirit. Listen, do not be afraid. You started your journey thinking you are only a businessman. But now you've gone through the training of a psalmist. You've gone through the training of an entrepreneur. You are now in the training of a prophet. You too, you don't even know the name of what you will become. He simply calls us witnesses. Because the nature of your assignment. Oh David, a day will come. It is your song that will come out from your spirit. But don't just call me a musician because I sing. There is still a prophet there. And hiding behind the layer of the prophet, there is still a king that is there. Can I tell you, hear me, there are some of you, God dealt with you in certain ways, but he has never used the product of your growth. He kept it. In the future, he will revisit it. There was a time you were writing songs and it stopped. And you think that that ministry has died. It has not died. God is only focusing on other training. A day will come, he will tell you, reach down to that weapon of chemistry. Bring it out. I suspended it so that I would train you in the prophetic. Now that you have become a prophet with fire, bring out that weapon of chemistry. Obedience. Obedience to scripture. Please listen. Obedience to scripture and obedience to prophetic instructions. Can I tell you? Prophetic seasons don't just demand discernment and flexibility. They do not just demand strength and courage. They demand obedience to scripture and obedience to prophetic instructions. Whatever he says to do, do it. The miracle of the wine is not just in your moving forward. It's in your moving as he commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. Not as I wanted. Not as I wished. The desires of many will lead them to perdition. Because they cannot submit their desire to the obedience of scripture. Or the obedience of the prophetic. Let me show you two scriptures. Number one. Is found in Luke chapter 5 and verse 5. You must be willing to receive and honor scripture and honor prophetic instructions. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have caught nothing. He says, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Can I tell you? Prophetic instructions are powerful when they are guided and administered within the jurisdiction of scripture. Prophecy is able to rewrite the narrative. Every time seasons are about to open, there is always a manifestation of the prophetic. When it was time for the famine in Samaria to end, the prophet Elisha came and with one decree, by this time tomorrow, everything, the climate changed. Prophetic instructions. Is it the miracle of abundant supply in Samaria? Is it the miracle of the ass head in 2 Kings chapter 1 to 7? 6, 1 to 7. The ass head that floated. It was all through and by prophetic instructions. Is it the victory in the days of Jehoshaphat? In 2 Chronicles 21 to 30, all of them depend 
on obedience to prophetic instructions. Let me tell you what prophetic instructions are not. Number one, it is not manipulating people to gratify self. It is not manipulating people to gratify flesh. That is not prophecy. It's just the limitation of humans when they are not broken and are not aligned to God. Authentic, genuine, biblical, prophetic instructions come as a scriptural instruction from God through His Spirit. Are we together now? And then through a human vessel to the people. For instance, declaring a fast. It says, sanctify yourself. For in three days, God will speak to you. He will come to you. Reveal himself. He will speak to you. Prophetic instructions. If it be thou, bid me come. He said, come. The excellency of prophetic instructions is that if and when they are obeyed, they always deliver. Because God is back of it. He confirmed the words of his messengers, he says. Hallelujah. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Now you understand that scripture. Behold, I do a new thing. I do a new thing in your life demands discernment and flexibility. I do a new thing demands strength and courage. I do a new thing demands that you obey. That you learn to live by the word of God. It says man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now please sit down. Let me give you this to wrap up tonight's teaching. But then this will be the ladder upon which we will take off from next week. This one now. Is a prophetic revelation God gave me. There are five prophetic seasons that are being opened to the body of Christ right now. I want you to write them down. Five prophetic seasons the Lord revealed to me that is being opened to the body of Christ now. And we must understand how to discern in the Spirit and how to walk with this. This is why this teaching came by the Spirit. Number one, the first prophetic season that is opening up to us right now is a season of the harvest. Please write. A season of the harvest. There will be such massive salvation of souls according to Matthew chapter 9 from verse 37, 38. We are in a season of the harvest. Then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. He says, next verse, 38 now, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. That means this harvest that you see, all these souls that you see who are careless, there is a caretaker. The caretaker is the Holy Ghost. To see to it that as many of them who come into the saving knowledge of Jesus, he is called the Lord of the harvest. That he will send forth laborers into his field. So every sinner in the mind of God is a harvest. It's not a seed growing. It's a harvest ready to be sickled into the fold. It is the bankruptcy of laborers. What is the implication of the season of harvest? I don't want to go ahead of myself. We'll leave that for next week. But the season of the harvest demands that there is a kind of training. There is an awakening that God is going to be placing upon men. Are we together? That will cause that through mighty signs and wonders. So many will come to Jesus within the time that we have left. The first season that is being opened before us now, believers, body of Christ, we must discern, is the season of the harvest. Are you ready for number two? The second season the Lord revealed to me is called the season of abundance of grace. The season of abundance of grace. Manifestations of divine abilities and enablement in a capacity that has not been seen. You will see men carry weighty graces, weighty possibilities. Ordinary men, but empowered in such an unusual way. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Acts 10, 38. And he went about. You don't go about. The difference between a madman and a destiny changer is what is on you. A madman too is going about, but he's not doing good. He's not healing they that are oppressed of the devil. There is a grace and a mantle. It's called an abundance. 
abundance of grace. Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. And God is able to make all grace mm, abound. Abound means coordinated towards your direction. That ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. Most times when we quote this scripture, we only limit it to finance. This has nothing to do with money or finance. It was referenced while he was teaching on sowing and reaping. But this is a very powerful, potent spiritual law. God is able to make all grace. A season of abundance of grace. What does that mean? Unusual manifestations. Joel chapter 2 from verse 28 to 32. You know the prophecy. The prophecy of Joel. It shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. 29. It says, and also upon the servants and upon my handmaids in those days I will pour out my spirit. 30. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Verse 32, it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. This is very powerful. Abundance of grace. That means men and women will carry unusual abilities of the spirit. Unusual abilities. Men like Joshua who would speak and literally the sun would stand still. Hallelujah. You will see men. You see, I was reading the other day about the church in Nigeria again. My goodness. History and technology did not combine themselves properly to do justice. For us to really explore the extent of grace and the hand of God that was upon these patriarchs who have now joined the cloud of witnesses. When you study the history of the church in Nigeria, some of these are old folks and our fathers who have now transited. These men operated in strange dimensions, but they did not have the advantage of technology to have a rich capture of their manifestations. Elemental forces literally bowed to the dominion of the grace of God upon them. But you see, as great as that is, Smith Wigglesworth died living a prophecy that there is still a generation coming that will outdo every manifestation of the hand of God upon their lives. I truly believe that this is the generation. Yes. I truly believe that. Not because we are better than the generations past. It has so pleased God by the election of grace and the prophetic timing that a generation will arise, ordinary men, but with such an abundance of grace. Number three, what is the third prophetic season that is being opened to the church? Are you ready? The season of the fulfillment of ancient prophecies. This is what God told me. The season of the fulfillment of ancient prophecies. Prophecies from scripture and prophecies from modern history. There are few of these mighty men we know who died without living a prophecy. Some of us have not found the prophecies. But some of these men under the unction of the spirit, especially around their final days on earth, they immortalize their impact by living certain prophecies. The things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning. So that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope. Hallelujah. There are great men and women who left very serious prophecies across several denominations. Some of them could not speak English, but they still spoke. They documented their writings. For the generation that is coming. Some of them, this, some of these, these prophecies were harbingers. They were signposts, warnings, cautions. Some of them were encouragements. Some of them, they were revelations of prophetic blueprints. Pitfalls to jump when you got to that level. 
It's important that we obtain grace first from scripture and then the wisdom of the ancient. God is empowering those prophetic words. For some of them, those prophetic words are hundreds of years old, but they will still come to pass. For instance, the prophecy about the revival that is happening across the nations. Don't you think a group of men were just scared and just had fire like that? Don't you think the prophecy about Nigeria has been there before some of us were born? Hallelujah. I remember a group of people. I have to bring to our reminder that we are the light of the world and our light shines brightest in the darkest places. I want us to look for opportunities to be a beacon of hope, love, and truth to those around us. Whether it's through a kind word, an act of service, or sharing your faith, let your light shine. If today's message encouraged you that we just listened to from God's servant, Apostle Joshua Salman, I want to encourage us that we share with someone who needs to be reminded about the God's love in their life. And don't forget to also subscribe. If you're just coming across Reflect Hub TV for the first time, please hit on the subscribe button and also on the notification bell so all of the videos that will be posted here on reflector hub tv you'll be notified about them and the comment section is always always open for your thoughts your opinions your prayer requests or like i always say maybe you have something you want to share with us the brethren the comment section is always always open don't forget to like this video too and please don't forget to go back on this video reflect pray with the words that were said the chapters of the bible that were mentioned that were quoted in the video please go back and then reflect and tell someone about jesus if you haven't been doing evangelism if you haven't been sharing god's word with people this is um a great start for you you sharing this video is a very good one it's a very great start tell someone about jesus tell them how jesus loves them do not criticize instead draw them close and tell them about Jesus and I pray that as you go about that as you embark on this journey the Lord will hold you by your hand and lead you through and guide you direct you on how to go about it in Jesus name thank you so much for staying up to the end of this video I want us to stay blessed I want us to seek with the word I want us to always always pray because in a time like this our greatest and most important weapon is prayer and the word of god and i pray that as we dwell in his presence and stick with god the lord we hold us by his hand and by our hand and lead us through and guide and protect us and we will not miss it on the last day in jesus name amen thank you so much once again stay blessed and see you in the next video